I'm not going to read every slide, but this is what I put together, just of some things that have helped me and just different, um, these are the different doctors that Meredith sees and that I found to be very helpful. Um, a lot of us all see neurologists and that's how we start out with, especially in the hospital, they give you a neurologist because of the seizures, but an epileptologist is extremely important because they are the experts regarding seizures. And Meredith was having so many seizures that she was in the hospital four times for a week at a time. We started seeing an epileptologist, they got better seizure control, and they gave us a different emergency medicine that kept us out of the hospital. So I highly recommend seeing one. Um, a physiatrist helps with all the rehabilitation and all the equipment. So a lot of, I get a lot of questions from moms about needing equipment and like their PT is telling them they can't get one. But if you see a physiatrist, they will tell you what you need and give you a prescription for it. Um, I think everybody's seen a geneticist getting all of that done. Um, a developmental pediatrician, usually they go up to three years old and they're also helpful in regards to equipment and things that just your regular pediatrician won't do. And then to see a pediatric dentist because all of our children have the condition regarding their teeth. And um, again, with Meredith, it's been very helpful. Uh, we see instead of every six months where we all normally go to the dentist, she goes every three months and they're trying to stay on top of keeping her enamel intact and then possibly putting um, special things on her teeth so to help them. Okay, and then these are the different types of therapy. Um, I highly suggest aquatic therapy. We started that and Meredith has gotten so much stronger from it and we've only been doing it for two months now. Um, I think most of these everybody knows about. CME therapy is something that a few people in other countries have done and that's where I heard about it on our private Facebook page. I started doing it. It's insane. It's a crazy, crazy therapy, I will tell you right now. And Meredith is okay for the beginning of it and then she's had enough and hates it, but it also has helped her getting stronger. I do see a significant difference. And in fact, I have to take my mother-in-law with me so she sings to her to keep her entertained through it to get her through it but it's been helping. <laughs> it really has helped her with her balance um, and just getting stronger. So those are the different types of therapies and if you have any more questions just ask me. Um, these are different equipments that Meredith doesn't have all of these. I know that um, Kim's children do. Meredith has, um, we're working on getting assistive technology device. I know Ellie got one. It's been great. I've heard from Erica. We did the PEX book and it was working for a while. It's the pictures, but now because it's Velcroed, Meredith thinks it's a toy and it's just not working anymore. Um, the bath chair has been so helpful because Meredith was just in the tub and a floppy mess and it was scary and dangerous. So I got this bath chair. I was able to get it through my insurance. Um, I can help anybody with that and it's been really good. Um, the seizure watch has been good, but it only does tonic-clonic seizures. It won't measure any other type of seizure, so you really have to be having those for it to work, but it does alert you to when the child is starting to have a seizure. Um, Kim, I believe your children, or just Colton, has a tented bed, and that really helped. Yeah, we had a hard time um, shifting from crib to regular bed. And so I think that there are intermediary beds that might be helpful to our group. And, and maybe what we do, Nicole, is have like a follow-up conversation where we can go into more depth on all these items. Yes, and I have pictures too, but I just, I know we didn't have time. That was more for the in-person thing. Um, so I will, I will get pictures of everything and share that with everybody. Um, the Spio suit, I don't know if anybody else has it. We just got it. And it's like Spanx for babies. It's so tight and it's so terrible, <laughs> but supposedly it's great. I'm not really sure. <laughs> um, so these are just the different types of um, like state things that you'll get early intervention, CPSC when they're older, and then an IEP for when they're in school. It's all through your state, through your district, um, your school district for the United States. Um, and then we recently got Medicaid as Meredith's secondary insurance, which has been picking up co-pays, medications, 
And it's also covering like the aquatic therapy that early intervention was not covering. So that is also something I can go into way more detail and help anybody with. And these are just some life hacks. Um, so I just wanted to show you guys real quick. I have this book that a nurse actually gave me in the NICU and she told me to write down, and I do, you can see every seizure and what they look like because when I go to the neurologist, they always ask me and it's super helpful because there is no way I would ever remember every seizure and what each one looked like, how long it lasted, everything. I have this medication chart that I made, I don't know if you can see it, and that I just put a little check every day for when I give her medicine so I can never say, oh, I've only slept two hours tonight, did I give her her medicine or did I not? And I have an alarm on my cell phone for when she's due for medicine because I would forget that also. Um, the outlet sock, it's just a wireless pulse oximeter. It measures heart rate and oxygen levels. That has been super helpful for us because when Meredith is sleeping and she has a seizure, she loses oxygen. So the alarm would go off and it would alert me to her having the seizure because otherwise I may have slept through it. Um, and I also got the video camera so when she's taking a nap, I can see her. The Wellu Kids Ox, that is another type for when they're older because the outlet sock only fits them for so long. Um, these are the emergency medicines, the Nasalam. It's a nose spray now, which is so much better than the diastat that's rectal because it's so hard, as all of you know, to do a rectal medication when they're having a seizure. And the Nasalam and the Midazolam is also, it's basically the Nasalam, just not single measure dose. Those have been great. They work amazing. So obviously it's per based on each child, but I highly recommend trying it. Um, syringes is just basically, I was gonna have a whole thing about whether or not you guys like reusable versus single use and how <laughs> you're working with that, but that's also something that could be covered by insurance. And I keep a logbook of when we go to the hospital and the doctors and nurses that talk to us and tell us different things because again, with everything going on, you just forget. Um, this I put together when to stay home, uh, when it's an emergency for us and based on our neurologist. So this way we're not running to the hospital every time she has a seizure. Um, obviously you can see it when the seizures last less than five minutes or you've given the emergency medicine and it stops. I also recommend calling your doctor to let them know or emailing however you talk to them, communicate, but there's no reason to go to the emergency room just because you've given the medicine as long as they're okay. If your child's seizures are not stopping um, after five minutes or after two doses of the emergency medicine, the seizures are clustering, they're not responsive, they don't go back to themselves. Going to sleep is fine. Meredith sometimes sleeps for two to three hours after, but when she wakes up, yes, she's floppy and she's cranky, but she's herself. Um, and these are some things for traveling that we've done. Definitely make sure you have enough medicine, especially in case you get stuck, flight delay, you know, being quarantined to your house. <laughs> I had to make sure we had enough medicine. Um, I also have a letter from our neurologist that states what she has and then what medicines work because when we go to the hospital, they automatically want to give her Ativan and Ativan does nothing. So her neurologist wrote down exactly what to give her, IV and this way, when wherever we are, we're not in our normal hospital, they can just give it to her. And just to chime in, that's going to be specific to each kid. Like, Ativan works great for my kids. So yeah, yeah, definitely. We're not here to give, like, medical advice specific to your child yeah. in this, but just figuring out what works for your child and having recommendations on some of the things that I think are sort of unique to our group of kids as opposed to just more traditional epilepsy. And that's exactly why, because Ativan usually stops seizures. So that's always their go-to for her, but for Meredith, it doesn't work. So that's why we have the letter. Um, bring several doses of your emergency medicine. I always bring the outlet wherever I go. Um, if you have an assistive tech device of any type, something comforting from home, especially because most of these kids are nonverbal, so you want them to have fun. If I bring the chart and the seizure book. I always stay within 15 minutes of a 24 hour hospital because you never know and the worst thing possible is to be somewhere you don't know where you are and then not know where the hospital is or how long it's gonna take you to get there and then your child is seizing for 30 minutes or something longer. It's just not a good feeling. And just try to have fun. <laughs> like, 
Don't worry about missing therapy. You definitely can make all that up. These are websites, links to just all of the equipment and things that I put together. And then um, I just wanted to know from everyone else what the issues are. We can have that conversation at a later time or people can email us. And Kim, you wanted to talk a little bit about the ICD-10 codes to help people get different things. Yeah, maybe we can push that just so that we make sure that we kind of cover everything. Why don't we, um, at the very end of this call, we'll open it up to questions and answers and I'm happy to stay as long as people want and maybe we can cover some of these questions then. Um, but I think having a follow-up where we really go into more depth and, and most importantly, learn from you guys about what's working for you. You know, Nicole and I have talked about what seems to be working for our families, but we'd like to start a list of, um, of items that just are useful so that when families are diagnosed, they have a list to go to of things that they might want to try uh, so that we can kind of shorten that, you know, throwing darts at a dartboard or whatever for some families in terms of figuring out how you deal on a day-to-day -day basis with some of the uh, symptoms of the disease. And I think it'd be helpful if we can put on the website a family section where we can add those websites and different doctor lists and equipments and stuff. So, so everybody can just see it when they want. And I'll send out a group email when I get those up on the website. And then if you guys could just, you know, email us or post in the Facebook group about things that are, that are useful to you, we'll continue to add to the list on the website as well. Perfect. Well, thank you, everybody. That's the end of my presentation. Um, if this is my email, phone number, and or Facebook, message me if you have any questions or need any help with anything. Thank you.